Hey, hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm going to be doing a video that's talking all about the university of edinburgh what i've learned so far regrets advice and trying to help you if you're going into first year this september currently in my second year but i'm about to go into my third year i made a similar video about first year so you can also watch that as well i haven't like properly planned this video so it's all going to be very kind of honest and just what i think about things grab yourself a drink and we're gonna delve right in I asked you guys about questions and stuff like that. The first thing I'm gonna delve into is talking about accommodation. It's such an important thing when going to university. It also helps to speak to somebody who's kind of directly experienced it already and kind of what they think about. I'll talk about first year accommodation and I'm gonna talk about second year accommodation. And these were the questions that I actually got the most about. I'm not the biggest expert on all of this. Please don't take my word for everything because I'm just saying what I've heard and like direct experiences as well. There's a lot of things that I still really, really don't know. But if we're talking first year accommodation, so I stayed in Darrick Court. I loved it there. It was a very social accommodation. People were all genuinely lovely and if you're interested as well the others i applied for at the time i did so much research into which one the hermit's craft warren Park crescent riego street we've not heard of anybody who's gone there so i only applied to that one because the art college was like two minutes away and nicholson street these accommodations were all very central because you can get ones that are 30 minute bus ride away personally i wouldn't really recommend looking at those ones it's based on personal preference but i just loved kind of being in the center of the city for first year we were near to everything it was just a kind of easier more smooth sailing experience rather than getting buses all the time however i do know people who absolutely loved kind of living a little bit away so if that happens to you or if you get allocated one like that like it doesn't matter but just make sure do your research about where they actually are in the city and the distance between everything. I was put into Derrick Court, which was a self-catered accommodation. All the ones I applied for were self-catered. If you want a non self accommodation, then I think Pollock is the main accommodation for doing so. It's a very sociable accommodation. I did get a couple of questions saying, is the stereotype kind of true at Pollock Halls? My experience, yes and no, that is a stereotype that it is kind of, there's a lot of kind of rich, people there don't really want to talk about it too much because literally it just completely depends but i think in general I kind of find that at edinburgh and probably, probably all the other unis as well like i don't think it's just an edinburgh thing it's just kind of coming from my background like i've not been completely used to that there's nothing wrong with it it's just can be quite a big change when you go there it's all part of the learning experience there is a stereotype in pollock that it is a little bit like that i know many cases where it isn't as well so to do not self-catered then pollock is probably a great option for you it's a very sociable place full of loads of people definitely a good place to make friends and things like that so i wanted self-catered anyways in terms of the price of first year accommodation i think genuinely it's not too bad because there's quite a wide range of of options compared to other universities because my brother's going to university this year. From comparing uni accommodation prices to the ones I applied to, there is a huge difference. I think as well it's because quite a lot of the accommodations at Edinburgh are quite old. I don't think they've done a lot to them, so some of them are a little bit grotty. You just have to deal with that first year. Good range, I think, of finding cheaper accommodation for first year and more expensive because there's just so many dotted around the city everywhere. We're going to talk about second year accommodation briefly. Finding a flat in Edinburgh for second year, third year fourth year is an insane process it's so competitive it's so difficult you have to be prepared for that the flat prices in edinburgh are insane it is such an expensive place they keep going up and up and up and up and up really beware of that because especially like in the city center you have to be so quick with the whole process it's very intense but you just have to kind of keep trying keep trying and eventually the right one will come around that's i mean i'm in the same situation this year as well i need to find a flat it's going to be an insane process again but everybody just has to keep their fingers crossed and hope that will show up and be fine but yeah it's a crazy time okay now on to money is the city expensive what's the cost of living like how does it compare to other places i'd say edinburgh definitely is an expensive city it's kind of what you'd expect it is a capital city so a little bit pricier i don't live in london so i can't really compare the prices there but from what i've heard they're not as bad but it's getting that bad i'm from like the midlands so going up it is more expensive however saying that, i feel like prices are kind of just increasing everywhere probably won't be that much of a big difference compared to where you live but obviously if you were to eat out all the time then yes it would be very very expensive but cafes and stuff like that I'm kind of thankful when i don't drink tea or coffee because they just cost so much looking on average for a latte is like three pound 80 to five pound ish and three pound 80 is like a good price for it if you're in self-catered kind of meal prep you buy from supermarkets there's a little which most students go to there's tesco right next to it there's a sainsbury's right next to it 
then obviously as well you've got money that will be spent on alcohol and drinks that will tot up a lot i haven't been out that much in second year to be honest but in first year that kind of side all does tot up my advice is be as sensible as possible with your money know what you're spending meal prep just know what you're spending money on try and find like the best deals for food but it is expensive however everywhere is expensive now so you just have to be sensible now there's a lot saying how's the party scene and the nightlife at Edinburgh. It seems like once you've got kind of a good group of friends to go with, it's really good. There's a lot of pubs. There are clubs. All have very mixed reviews from everybody. At first year, I really enjoyed it. I would not say it's the best nightlife. From what I've heard, other places are a lot, a lot better. I think as long as you've kind of got people to go with, you can make anything work. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that because it's not like there aren't any places. There are loads. You just kind of gradually hear and learn about about places to go to. There's so many places you can go and visit. You can just make it work. It can be really good. Okay, so there's a lot asking about the course that I take, whether it's good, what the uni's like in general, in terms of support, and you get a question saying, I've heard Edinburgh student satisfaction is low. Would you agree with this? Because I take a creative subject, I can't really speak on this. In terms of other subjects, I can only go off what I've heard. Subjects for any of you wanting to do like a creative subject, because we have a lot of one-to-ones with tutors, we have a lot of kind of contact time. I think in terms of support, tutors would definitely be there to help. So for creative subjects, I think they are definitely better from other subjects. I know there's a lot of people that don't get as much help with stuff in terms of getting assessments back and marked and then there is just a little lack of help. I know as well that there's not as much help as there should be in terms of support with students as well, just general matters of support or if you've got like mental health issues. I know I've heard loads of documents online about that and I have heard from some people too. They just have a lack of help in that area, which is what also contributes to the student satisfaction being so low. Anyway, on a more positive note, let's talk about my favourite things in Edinburgh. There's so many. The bus system in Edinburgh is really good, by the way. It allows you to get free buses for the whole four years, I'm pretty sure. My favorite things to do, these will all be very touristy too. It's gonna be the section made for people who are just genuinely wanting to visit a super quick fire list. So of course, Edinburgh Castle, you can't miss it. Amazing, it still boggles me that there is like a massive castle that you can just see from pretty much anywhere. You can go in that, you can go up to it and you get a great view of the city around it. Some places I'd recommend to get the best shots of the castle. The Venel, my favorite street in all of Edinburgh. Princess Street, you get a great view of it and Grass Market. Okay, and things to do. Victoria Street, the place with the little colorful houses. There's loads of cute little cafes and shops on there. Um, walk on the Royal Mile. It's a huge street with a load of touristy shops are it also looks so beautiful if you're shopping you can go to princess street and st james's center from princess street you can head to circus lane which is kind of one of the most photographed street but it's so cute and then from there you can head into stockbridge which is another little village loads of good charity shops there on sunday they do a little market definitely go to and then a little bit more of a walk away from that go to dean village which again is stunning and if you want to know where to get good views of the city then climbing off the seat it's the old volcanic rock in edinburgh it is quite a tough walk but the views from the top are insane there's also the salisbury crags which are next to that kind of which you can climb up them um, and again stunning view if you want an even easier option then definitely go to colton hill i love just chilling up there people watching over the city in the sun it's so nice in terms of places to kind of relax the meadows which especially if you go to university you'll hear about like the main kind of grassy bit in edinburgh gorgeous place a little bit scary at night be careful walking by yourself there always try and stay in a group but in the daytime stunning place especially in summer have cute little picnics there then there's the national museum which is actually completely free to go in it's a massive place it's got so much stuff in the scottish national gallery is also free which you can go in you can visit the botanical gardens in edinburgh i've only been in the winter when there wasn't kind of all the blooming of flowers and stuff so I do really want to go back there. There's so many charity shops and there's loads of good cafes. I'm still trying to figure out which is the best one. I'm really good at just forgetting which ones I've been to. And of course the beach, Portobello Beach. There's also Cramond Beach but Portobello is my safe space. I adore the beach and the fact that there is a beach a 30 minute bus ride away from the city is actually just incredible to me. I go there to see Glass Hunt and just in summer relax. There's my little list of things to do when you're by yourself in Edinburgh or with people or just if you want to go and see the city so much more when people ask me what is my favorite thing about the city only just the fact that there are so many things to do and i genuinely believe i will never get bored in that city it's a beautiful place the architecture in it 
the greenery, the fact there's literally a beach, so many places with beautiful views. I suppose if that stuff doesn't mean as much to you, then possibly it might not be a place for you. I'm very much into my nature and sort of romanticizing every day, so it's the perfect place for me to do it because even when it is rainy and horrible, we're in a stunning place. That's why I love it. There was also a question kind of comparing my hometown to uni life and which one do I prefer. As much as I love my hometown, grew up here, it's a very cute little village. It doesn't compare to the vastness of the city. Have your own independent freedom to just go wherever you want, whenever you want. It's a very safe feeling city as well, which is why I'm so comfortable with just kind of going places in, in the day, doing things by myself. So compared to my hometown, that is, it's got a little bit of something. Also, my mum is planning to move up to Scotland this summer, so that's going to be a change very exciting got a few questions of people asking me if not at uni of edinburgh where would i be but i applied to newcastle liverpool john moore university of leeds and aberystwyth a bit of a random choice on the end there to get into all of them edinburgh was the last to get back to me literally the end of april they i've received an offer from them it was like a covid year so it was all a bit messed up so, and i think if i wasn't at edinburgh i would have chosen to go to newcastle i'm pretty sure i love that city also love the architecture to how the city feels as well in my head it's kind of like a little edinburgh that's where i was planning to go i just convinced myself that i would never ever get into edinburgh I got a lot of questions saying, is it hard to get into as well? And I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. It is known to be one of the ones that has quite a low acceptance rate. I think for my art course, it was only like 2% that got in. So how that happened? I don't know, but I literally manifested it. I wanted to go there for kind of two years before we even had to apply. I already had like Pinterest boards made. So set on going there. There was just something that was just like drawing me there. Is it scary making friends? What's Edinburgh like for making friends in the uni? So is it scary making friends? Obviously it is. You can't escape it at the start of university, as kind of terrifying as it sounds. I was terrified. You kind of just have to be this confident person. Honestly, if I can do it, you can do it. Like you'll surprise yourself with kind of the person you become in the first week of like uni because everybody is so friendly, so lovely, and you just kind of find it easy to talk to people. You don't overthink things as much as you think you're gonna. You just have to be kind of willing to do that and open your mind to do that. If you are trying to be this kind of closed off person, you won't have the experience you wanted to have. Just try and be as open, open as possible. What's Edinburgh like for making friends? I'd honestly say it's quite difficult. I don't know, unless you've made good friends in your accommodation, I think courses can be quite hard to make really good friends of. That's what I've heard. It does seem quite difficult. I'm guessing that's kind of the same with every single uni, to be honest. Immersing yourself in everything in first year. Try and join societies. I didn't, but I do think it would have helped me a lot. Do try and join something or a sport. You can even do the recreational. Before I came to uni, I joined loads of student room group chats, especially for accommodation, WhatsApp group chats, Facebook. I kind of try to find everybody in my room. I found two people before moving in who I had like conversations with, so it wasn't as daunting. I'd say definitely joining societies will help. I'm in a couple of societies this year, well, for the second half of the year. One of them, I didn't really meet any new people, but one of them, like I did have friends in one of the societies that I joined, but we only became closer. I'm literally living with two of them next year. So it just shows how the world works. Like you have to put yourself out there, basically. My biggest advice, even though it's so scary, realistically, nothing will change. If you don't, just go be that confident kind of version of yourself. Do it for the plot, as they say. I'm gonna go through a few more of the questions that you asked me, just kind of random one. There's a lot asking about the weather of Edinburgh, how much it affects my life. Um, I suppose if you're coming from a very, very, very sunny place, then yes, it is a big, big, big difference. It does mostly rain all the time or it's cloudy. There's not that much sun apart from in the few months of summer. It makes me a little bit more, you know, about my days and stuff, but you just kind of have to look look through them. just ignore that and see the good in it as well not let it affect you that much but then saying that it might be easier for me because i've kind of been used to it my entire life because i lived in the uk which is known for its bad weather so and do you have any plans when you will finish uni currently no that's why i'm very glad that my course is four years glad that i've got like a little bit more time to digest everything and just kind of really think about what i want to do which is very scary but i definitely want to do something to do with our carry on with with social media as well so we will see Genuinely, so much that i could talk about so i'll probably make a part two like there's nothing to say that uni is smooth sailing even though in my videos kind of i make it look like this idealized romanticized like version there have been tough times for me it's not all what you see i think it's important for people to understand that um that's one of the things with social media like it's always kind of the perfect version of your life and as much as i try and romanticize my life because that's kind of what keeps me going it's not 
not always like that. If you've got any other questions about going to Uni of Edinburgh, then just comment down below and I'll try and reply to you all. But like I said, there'll probably be another video coming up soon. I'd say it definitely is one of the best cities to be in, but I am sort of biased in terms of the city. You can't fault it. In terms of the uni, there are definitely things that could be changed. In general, it's a good uni. It's there's good people and the city. I do love it there. So yeah, I'm probably going to end this video now. I really hope you enjoyed it. Just subscribe down below if you'd like. And give it a huge thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Love you all and best of luck for anybody who is going to Edinburgh next year. I hope you have an amazing time and just anybody who's starting first year next year in general. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye!